Back now on Andrea Mitchell reports, artificial intelligence could pose an existential threat to humanity. That's according to a new warning from industry leaders. Mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. That's what it reads in one sentence statement that came from the Center of AI Safety. That's a nonprofit organization. This open letter was signed by more than 350 executives, researchers, and engineers working in AI. And joining me now is Massachusetts Congressman Seth Moulton, a former Marine Corps officer. He served in Iraq. He is now a member of the Armed Services Committee. Congressman Moulton, thank you for being with us. I want to get right to the op-ed that you wrote in the Boston Globe. And you wrote in part... What is perhaps the most direct threat to human life, AI-enabled warfare, has barely been part of the discussion. Think killer robots, autonomous weapons, which can identify, select, and apply lethal force to a target, already exist. But as a matter of policy, the U.S. requires that they still have a human operator in the decision cycle. So, Congressman, are industry leaders, is the government doing enough here? What needs to happen now? Not even close. I mean, the fact that industry leaders who have been developing AI for years only just now came out and called attention to how dangerous it can be, I mean, just shows how far we are behind as an industry, as a country, and certainly as a government. I've been pushing the Pentagon for at least three years now to get out ahead of this, and I'm sorry to say we're way behind. Let me ask you about the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken. He's attending what they call the Trade and Technology Council meetings in Sweden. And he said this about AI. Listen. We had a very um, intensive and I think um, productive discussion on artificial intelligence today, including generative AI. I think we share a conviction that the TTC has an important role to play in helping uh, establish voluntary codes of conduct that would be open. Uh, to all like-minded countries. Congressman, is that sufficient, a voluntary code of conduct? No, absolutely not. And and it's also especially not sufficient to limit it to like-minded countries. The danger here is what comes from our adversaries. You know, you mentioned how the United States has made a policy decision uh, that humans still pull the trigger. Uh, The Patriot's weapon, the Patriot missile system, for example, that's defending Ukraine right now, it's essentially an autonomous weapon system, but a human, a a well-trained soldier still has to make the moral decision to push the button. Just today, the Russians announced that their anti-aircraft system operated entirely autonomously. So if you hand Vladimir Putin a killer robot and you say, look, this, this, this robot can take out every soldier in a building, it will be careful and methodical to avoid civilian casualties, but if you just flip this switch, it doesn't care about civilian casualties, it'll just do the job much more quickly and more effectively. I mean, what's Vladimir Putin going to choose? He's already leveling Ukrainian cities. So the danger here is not that you don't get like-minded countries in the West to align. It's that we don't make international standards that our adversaries, uh, nations led by autocrats like Xi Jinping in China and Vladimir Putin in Russia, we need to get them on board with these norms. Congressman, let me ask you about a couple other headlines that you're familiar with. The debt ceiling deal right now. Are you going to vote in favor of this bipartisan agreement? Absolutely, because it's the right thing to do for the country. Look, it's easy to find reasons to vote against this compromise bill because it's got something that everybody doesn't like. And I certainly have concerns with it. But the alternative, pushing our country into a catastrophic default, is terrible for everybody. And so the right thing to do is for Democrats and Republicans to come, come together, agree to this compromise, and save the country from economic catastrophe. We expect to see that vote happening on the House floor later today. Let me ask you finally about a Chinese fighter jet. You likely saw this. It flew directly in front of a U.S. aircraft over the South China Sea over the last weekend. The Pentagon called it a, quote, unnecessarily aggressive maneuver. What message is China sending the United States? China is continually ratcheting up the tensions in the Pacific. China has said very explicitly that they're willing to take Taiwan by force. The United States doesn't want a war. Taiwan doesn't want a war. But Xi Jinping has said that he's willing to start one. And this dangerous behavior could be the prelude to a a, a real terrible tragedy. That's why I sit on the China Committee, where we're working hard to prevent that uh, that kind of war. 
Congressman Seth Moulton of Massachusetts, we always appreciate your time and perspective. Thanks for being with us.